What's up everybody? Welcome to my sixth tutorial on XHTML. In the last tutorial we learned how to create a block quote and we also learned how to make an unordered list. And today we're going to be playing around with a font tag, changing the size and the color of the font on our website, and maybe some other stuff too if we have enough time. So let's get started and go ahead and clear out anything you might have in your body from last time so you have a nice empty body to work with. And just type any text in it to get started. This is text. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it a few times to represent what a paragraph might look like. And if we save that and we go ahead and look at it right now, then we could see that it's kind of plain right now, just black text, average size, white background. So say we wanted to do something different. To change the color or the size of the font in this paragraph, you need a tag called the font tag. And I'm going to split this up just to show you what it looks like before and after. So let's say we wanted to make this font red. So you would put the beginning tag and it's called font at the beginning of where wherever you want it to apply and wherever you want it to end put the end font tag. Now right now this and this are formatted the exactly the same way. They look the same way. But say we wanted the changes to red we would need to add an attribute to the font tag and the attributes name is color so type in color equals and you can type anything you want I'm gonna type red because it's easy to show up on the computer so here's your attribute and here's your value color equals red and it's all enclosed in the beginning font tag and here's where it ends and anything in between it right here is going to be red. So let's say not only did we want it red but we want it a little bit bigger too. To change that the attribute to use is called size and you can pick any size from 1 to 7, 1 being the smallest, 7 being the biggest and I'll make it size 7 since it will be easy to see so size equals seven in quotation marks. So now this font should be red and bigger than average. So let's save that and take a look at it in Internet Explorer. And as we can see, in instead of using the body attributes, what would which would apply to the entire body, using the font tag, we can apply attributes to certain parts of paragraph and this is very useful when you're trying to make certain words or sentences stand out as you can see this is all that we applied with our font tag and this is what we left normal you can see the difference see the color and that it's bigger now you can also use one more attribute that's very helpful and that's called the face attribute and this changes the font now by default it's Times New Roman and say we wanted to change it to Arial so we put face equals and type in Arial and end it so let's save it and take a look at what it looks like as you can see not only is it red in size 7 but it's also changed from Times New Roman, which is this font, to Arial, which is this font. So say we wanted to apply this to an entire paragraph. So say we had a paragraph right here, some text right here. And let me copy this text and paste it. And this is where the paragraph would end. So now we have a beginning paragraph tag and an end, and this is all our paragraph. If we wanted to apply it to an entire paragraph, we would simply type the font tag right here and end it right here. 
So both of the font tags are enclosed inside the paragraph tag and you would simply change the color or whatever you want to change about it. And as you can see when you view this in Internet Explorer that the entire paragraph is now whatever you wanted it to change using the font tag. This is also, also useful if you want to change one paragraph but leave another just like it is or just wanted to format them in different ways. So let's get rid of all of this. So we have an empty body and I'll show you some other things that you can do with text. You can make it bold and how to make it italics. So let's just type in this is text and say you wanted to make this text bold what you would use is a tag called the strong tag and you put a beginning tag beginning wherever you wanted to begin and ending strong tag wherever you wanted to stop it from being bold and say you wanted something else where you wanted to make it italics do that you would open with the E M tag and write whatever you want to make italics this is italics and end it with the ending em tag so anything you want to make bold you surround the strong tags and anything you want to make italics you surround with the em tags so let's save that and take a well, take a look at what it looks like and as you can see what we surrounded with strong is now bold and what we surrounded with EM is now italics. And I'll show you guys a couple more symbols that are quite useful. So let's close out of this. Say you wanted to add a copyright sign. To do this, you would put the symbol above the 7, the ampersand, and type copy and type semicolon. Now this character is special, it's not like anything else. It doesn't interpret these symbols individually, it interprets this as a whole. This entire thing together is a copyright sign. So you might have something like copyright 2007 the new Boston. So let's save that and take a look at what it looks like. And as you can see, you now have a copyright symbol. So like I said, using the ampersand, the symbol above the 7, typing copy, and then using a semicolon, you can achieve this copyright symbol. Now, let's say that, let's clear out our body so we have an empty body and type this is text. Then let's add a bunch of spaces and let's type something else. So let's save that and take a look at what it looks like right now. And as you can see, even though we added a bunch of spaces, there's only one space in between this. And this is because that whenever you add a bunch of space, it's just so people can make things easier to view when they use your notepad editor. And this is so that you can, you know, put things in different places and no matter how many spaces you have in between them only one space is going to show up but what if you actually wanted spaces in between them well to do this you would need to add something called a non breaking space and it's a lot like the copyright symbol you use the ampersand the symbol above the 7 type in n b s p for non breaking space and the semicolon now I'm going to go ahead and copy that and paste it a few times just to show you guys. I'm going to go ahead and save it and launch in Internet Explorer. And as you can see, when you add those, you have space in between your text. And this is very useful. If you just keep adding spaces without this, then the browser is not going to recognize this as an actual space. If you want to make an actual space that your viewers can view as a space, you need to add the non-breaking space symbol. And again, that's an ampersand, 
N B S P and a semicolon. And we're out of time for right now, but in the next tutorial, we go we're going to be learning about how to create links. And if you're not already there, you can go to www.thenewboston.com and check out all my tutorials. And I'll also have a step by sorry a step by step instruction on everything we went over today. Thank you.